We're now going to study a few properties of the Fourier transform with some examples. Uh, let's start off with a very simple one, which is linearity. Uh, and so linearity is defined like this. Let's say that we have a function x1 of t, and its Fourier transform, which we write like this, is given by x1 of j omega. And x2 of t has a Fourier transform of uh, x2 of j omega. Then for any constants a and b, which are belong, which are actually can be complex, which belong to c, uh, the Fourier transform of a x1 t plus b, oops, uh, b x2 t is going to be the, the Fourier transform is given by a x1 j omega plus b x2 of j omega. And so uh, it's sort of more or less what you'd expect, and the proof is really very straightforward. It just requires, uh, requires you to plug in the values uh, for the Fourier transforms and evaluating the sum of the integrals. And I would recommend just doing it as an exercise just to make sure you understand it. But uh, this linearity property, along with this uh, that we studied earlier, allows us to do some uh, interesting things. For example, let's compute the Fourier transform of the function cos omega naught t. So this is the cosine function, which has a, time, a frequency omega naught. And so we can rewrite cos omega t, if you remember, as the sum of two uh, uh, complex exponential. So remember that this is the, our, our famous friend, the complex exponential. And cos omega t can be written as half of e to the j omega naught t plus e to the minus j omega naught t. And now we know that each of these uh, values over here, so this uh, this e to j omega naught t, we can get the Fourier transform like this. And then this one also, you can do the Fourier transform like that. And so if we plug it all together, we get that the, the uh, Fourier transform of cos omega naught t is going to be given by uh, pi uh, delta omega plus omega naught plus delta omega minus omega naught. And uh, these are two impulses in the frequency domain. If I were to look at the frequency domain like this in the omega domain, basically this is a pulse over here at omega naught and another pulse over here at minus omega naught. And these are scaled to the value pi. So the value, this is the value pi in both sides. And so just using linearity and this fairly straightforward computation I showed earlier, we're actually able to compute quite straightforwardly the uh, Fourier transform of the cosine function. And a similar thing can be done for the uh, sine function as well.